everyone, I'm Chelsea with Ascendri Asana, and today I'm bringing you a yoga class for that perfect post-run stretch. So we'll be focusing on our hamstrings, our quads, our hips and hip flexors, and our calves and ankles too. So it's not just for runners, it's for anyone who does a lot of movement or walking or any type of exercise, or you just find that you're super tight in your lower body. So I welcome you to join me today. Feel free to grab a towel um, or some yoga blocks if you think that'll be helpful for you. And we're just gonna get started in child's pose. So you can start out at the back of your mat if you'd like. And bring your big toes together, your knees nice and wide. And we're just gonna walk our hands out. And we're going to rest our frontal lobe on the mat. And we're just going to reconnect with our breath. So if you're doing this class right after a run or any type of strenuous activity, we just want to recenter ourselves with our breath. So really slow down our breathing and get it back to our natural rhythm. And I welcome you to take this time to scan your body and notice the areas that you feel tightness, any areas that feel tender or knotted. Even if it doesn't have to be your lower back, it can be your, or your lower body, it can be your upper body, your arms, your shoulders. And just imagine on your inhale, breathing light and breath into that spot. And then exhale it out. Now just take a moment to recenter yourself. And turn your attention inward. And when you're ready, we're going to feel as if we're clawing into our mat with our hands and use that to kind of pull yourself up. So round through that upper back and pull yourself forward, going past, bring your shoulders past your wrists, and we're gonna come up into an upward facing dog. So lift those knees off the mat if you can. If not, you can gently rest them on the mat. We're just going to breathe into our upward facing dog, squeezing our shoulder blades together. And then on our exhale, we're going to drop our knees and push ourselves back into that child's pose. Deep inhale, claw at the mat again as you rise up, coming into that upward facing dog again. Like ripples and waves in the ocean. And then exhale, drop those knees and send those sit bones back to your heels. Deep inhale, rise up. And exhale, send it back. Let's do two more. Inhale as we rise up. And exhale as we send it back. Inhale, pushing the mat away, rounding out the spine, upward facing dog. Exhale, child's pose. And we're gonna end this exercise in upward facing dog. So let's do one more inhale. Rounding out the spine into upward facing dog. And then let's come into plank. So you may have to wiggle your feet back. We're gonna keep the tops of the toes and the feet on the mat. So this is a modified plank. So we're not tucking those toes under. You'll see my, um, the tops of my feet are still pushing into the mat. 
And when we run, we get really like tight ankles that we don't even think about. So we're gonna kind of exercise that. So we're gonna drop the outer edges of our feet and our heels towards the mat, and then bring them back in and tap those heels together. Drop them out to the side, tap those heels together. Pushing through the mat, strong, engaged core, strong shoulders, and drop the heel out. Tap the heels together, drop the heels out. Let's do one more. Tap the heels together, drop the heels out, and then come to neutral, keeping those toes tucked under, or so that our tops of our toes are on the mat. We're gonna send it back into downward facing dog. So our toes are still, um, the tops of our toes are still on the mat, and we're pushing our sit bones back. So this is really stretching the joints of our toes and the tops of our ankles. If this is too uncomfortable for you, you can always tuck those toes under like this. If not, just kind of breathe through the stretch. Gaze toward your toes, pushing the mat away, clawing your fingertips into the mat, slight micro bend in the knees, and then release, tucking those toes under and coming into our downward facing dog. Feel free to pedal up the knees here. Really feel that stretch in those hamstrings as you extend that heel to the mat. And I want you to come to a neutral position if you can. And let's bend those knees generously. Kind of sinking our head and forehead towards the mat. And then rise back up, straightening out those legs and seeing if you can press those heels towards the mat. So inhale. Bending those knees. Exhale, straighten them out, dropping the heel. Good, inhale. Exhale, straighten up those legs. See if you can drop that heel. Inhale, bend the knees. Exhale. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten, stretching that heel. And let's hold here a moment. Deep inhale and exhale. You may need to walk your hands in just a little bit for this next exercise. But we're going to ground through that right hand and let's see if we can reach our left hand over to our right calf or our right ankle. Feel free to walk your hand in a bit more if you need to. And let's stretch it over to the right side. So spinal twist over, gazing under your right arm. Breathe a moment. And return that left hand. Now ground through that left hand and let's bring our, our right arm over to the left calf. Spinal twist over to the left side. Gaze towards the ceiling. Strong left arm. Core still active and engaged. Slight micro bend in the knees. And release. And then let's ground through that right foot as we inhale our left leg up and back. Right now my hips are square. See if you can open up those hips, bend that knee, so bring that heel towards um, your booty. Maybe you want to tent those left fingertips. And just open up, let that leg hang heavy behind your body, really opening up those hips. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Now straighten out that leg, drop that left hand, tickle your plants with your toes, <laughs> and let's bend it over to the outside and bring it, keeping it straight up until your hand, and then bring it down under the body. If you can't do this movement without bending it, that's okay. That's just a little extra fun challenge. You can always just bring it down in between your legs. And we're gonna, just gonna do a light hop, so light hop with that right foot to come into a pyramid pose. At this time, if you want, you can grab your blocks and put them in third position or second position, just as a little booster to keep your spine long. Otherwise, if you're able to touch your mat with your hands, even if they're tented, feel free to do so. And you'll feel a nice stretch through the front hamstring. And we're gonna do a fun, just little rocking exercise. So we're gonna inhale as we peel that front foot, those front toes off the mat. Sending our sit bones back towards the back of our mat as we do so. You'll really feel your hamstrings fire. And then exhale as we come up onto the toes of our back foot, dropping our front toes to the mat. And just feeling that stretch in the right calf. And we'll rock it back, peeling those front toes off the mat, giving a hamstring stretch. And exhale, come up onto the toes of the back foot as we rock our body weight forward over the front leg. And we're just going to do this motion for a few more times, just really stretching out the back body. Exhale as we peel those toes off. Good job guys, let's do one more here. Good. Now we're gonna walk our hands forward. Maybe bring our left leg back just a little bit. And we're gonna drop our right hip to the mat. So slowly drop that right hip to the mat. You can reposition that left foot so it's kind of just in front of your hip in line with your hip. And we want to keep this foot flat on the mat. That's important for this exercise. So we're going to stretch that IT band that kind of runs on the outer side of our hip and you'll really feel it when we lift up in this position. So kind of make it so your shoulders like just over your wrist on this arm. Um, keep the outer edge of your right foot pressed into the floor and, and keep your left foot totally flat on the mat. We're going to inhale as we push our right arm into the mat, lifting up our hips and pushing that right leg into the mat. So exhale as you come up. Keeping this foot on the mat, you'll feel a deep stretch right through that IT band. And then inhale as we drop that hip back to the mat. Exhale, let's push our hip up, extending that left arm overhead, keeping that left foot flat, and inhale back down. Exhale, you can even do like a whoo breathing motion, and then deep inhale back down. Let's do a nice big audible exhale as we Lift up and over. Deep inhale. And then one more. Exhale. Hold here a moment. Feel that stretch through that outer leg. And then let's drop that left hand to the mat and kind of walk our left leg in. 
And at this time, you can grab a blanket or towel if you want to put under that back knee, um, just for a little extra support. So I'm using my face soft towel. Um, if you've never heard of face soft towel, face soft towels, they're a company that's dedicated to um, reducing the amount of microplastics that go into the ocean. So apparently a lot of towels have are made with microplastics, so then when we wash them, all those tiny plastic particles end up in our waterways and eventually make their way to our oceans. So this company is dedicated to um, making towels without those microplastics. And then they're also made with antibacterial and antimicrobial um, compounds to keep your skin clean and healthy. So I personally love my towel. I'll put a link in the description below. You can use code CHELSEA20 if you want your own and get a 20% discount. So it's just something to try. I really love this company. But anyway, so feel free to grab a towel and place it under your knee. Like I said, I just need a little extra support, otherwise my knees get really uncomfortable. And then we're going to come into this nice low lunge. We're going to only keep our hands on the mat for a moment. We're actually going to lift up and put our hands on our knees. And we're going to sink forward, but we're not going to sink forward so much that we're just like, whew, yeah, look at my stretch. <laughs> no, so we're just um, sinking forward just enough. We want to focus on tucking our tailbones under. So right now we're in, this would be anterior pelvic tilt, so I'm tilting my pelvis forward. So we want to be in posterior tilt, so we're lengthening that tailbone down. So like someone pinched you in your butt and you're like, whoo. <laughs> just so you know, if that helps you. <laughs> so lengthening that tailbone down, and when we do this, this is what will help us feel that stretch through that right hip flexor. So we're going to place our hands on that front knee, and we're going to push our pelvis forward while lengthening that tailbone down, and you should really feel a nice deep stretch through that right hip flexor. So we're just going to breathe through this stretch a little bit. The more you lengthen that tailbone, the deeper you'll feel it in that hip flexor. And just breathe. And then we'll release our hands to the mat. And from here, you can either keep your back knee on the mat or you can lift it up to come into that nice runner's lunge to get that deeper stretch. And if you want, you can even kind of pulse your pelvis up and down and you really feel it through your right hip flexor and then also that left hip. So you can do light pulses with me if you want or you can hold it here or you can still have your knee down if that's more comfortable. We're just gonna breathe through the stretch. Nice, strong, engaged core. Glutes squeezing and active. You wanna think about keeping that left knee tucked towards your arm, so we're not letting it splay out. Keeping it nice and tucked towards the body. Now if you want, you can add a nice quad stretch component to this by dropping that back knee and you can kind of straighten out that front knee to send your booty back just a bit to lift up that back leg and grab that back ankle and then you can send it forward again. I like to flex my foot here to kind of protect that ankle joint. So keeping it flexed and then send it, sending it forward. And we don't want to be dumping our weight into this right wrist. We really want to make sure we're getting, um, putting a lot of pressure into that leg to help support us so we're not um, straining our wrist in any way. So just kind of do a little quick check of yourself. See how far you can bring that heel in, closer you can bring that heel in towards your booty. And if you'll really feel your right quad activate. Good, and let's release that leg now. So slowly release that leg. 
and let's drop um, our shin to the mat. So kind of walk your left foot over to the right side. And you can, it doesn't have to be a 90 degree angle. We're coming into pigeon pose. So a lot of times people say, oh, 90 degree angle, or not a 90, they say it should be parallel to the front of your mat. And um, if you don't have that type of flexibility, that can really hurt your knee joint. So feel free to tuck that heel in closer to your groin and make this position a little more comfortable for you. You wanna think about um, externally rotating that shin, pointing those left toes, and sending your hips to the mat. And we want to try to keep our hips square to the front of the mat. And almost like an internal rotation of that right leg, just a bit. <sighs> Trying to get those hips square with the mat. And I like to tent my fingers in this posture. It helps me kind of push up. So if you feel, if you push the mat away and kind of lengthen through the spine, you'll feel the stretch more in your right hip flexor. So if you feel that your hip flexors are just super tight, um, feel free to stay in this posture and just breathe into that hip flexor. But if you want a little more of a stretch in your left IT band through that left outer hip, you can kind of walk your hands forward and rest your forearms on the mat and you'll feel more of a stretch right in that left hip. So whichever one you're kind of needing at this time, feel free to do that. I always like to sink a little forward and feel it in that hip, so I am going to stay on the mat. Feel free to breathe. A couple of nice deep breaths. Now if you're up and you haven't walked yourself down, feel free to walk down onto your hands or onto your forearms. And we're gonna bend and peel that right leg off the mat. And when you do this, you'll feel your right quads firing and you'll also feel it in your adductor muscles of your left leg, so those inner thigh muscles. So feel, try to pull your right heel as close to your butt as you can. And then let's do some ankle rolls. So if you keep it tight towards your butt, everything will be stretching right now. Those, like I said, your quad and the ad, those adductor muscles. And then we're also just getting in a nice little ankle roll. So don't let that leg get lax where it's down here. Really keep pulling it towards your butt. And just do nice generous circles with that ankle. You'll hear some snap, crackle, and pops, and that's totally healthy. I'm just kind of doing it one way and then the other, no, no real pattern. Good, and let's release that leg. Come up onto our hands. Push the mat away so our hips come off the mat and then send it back into plank and then into our downward facing dog. I'm gonna remove my towel at this time. And I'm actually going to switch so you can see it a little better on the other side. Let's ground through that left leg like we did before and in inhale that right leg up and back bend that knee bring that heel towards the butt and let's open up that hip to the side now feel free to tent those right fingertips if you want and just breathe into that right hip to the side, eventually bringing your foot under the body. 
and planting it in the middle of the mat. You can kind of hop that left leg in just a bit. Feel free to grab those blocks again if you need to into our pyramid pose. And we're going to inhale as we bring that left heel up and bring your weight forward. And then exhale as we send it back, peeling those right toes off the mat, feeling that stretch through that right hamstring. Inhale, coming forward. Sometimes I come up onto my toes of the right foot even. And then exhale, sending it back, peeling those toes off the mat. Inhale, come forward. Feeling it in your calf muscle. Exhale, sit bones back, toes peel off the mat. Inhale forward and exhale back. Let's do one more inhale forward and exhale back. Now let's bring our hands in front of us kind of in plank. Send that left foot back just a bit, and we're going to drop that left hip to the mat once again. Again, make sure, feel free to walk your foot in so it's more in line with your leg and your hip. We're going to press that left hand through the mat, keeping the right foot flat on the mat. We're going to, and then also pressing through that outer edge of that left foot. We're going to take a nice big inhale. And then exhale, push up, extending that right arm overhead, pressing that right foot into the mat, feeling your stretch through that IT band. And then inhale, dropping that hip. Exhale, push yourself up. Inhale, exhale. Deep inhale back down. Let's do one more audible exhale up. Hold here. Remembering to breathe, nice inhale. And then let's drop our right hand to the mat. Coming up onto those back toes. Let's bring that right foot in between our hands and drop that left knee. Again, grabbing a towel or a blanket if you need to, to put under that back knee. We're gonna do a hip flexor stretch on the left side this time. So push those hands into those knees, lengthen that tailbone down, and you'll really feel it through that left hip flexor. And then just sink forward just a bit so that you're feeling that nice stretch. And breathe. When you're ready, you can release your hands to the mat into this nice low lunge. And you can either stay in this low lunge or you can lift that back knee off the mat and come into our runner's lunge. Again, tucking that right knee towards your torso, so towards the midline. Um, core nice and active and strong. You can even pulse the pelvis a bit just to give yourself a nice little deeper stretch here or just hold static. And just breathe, pushing the hands into the mat. But um, you want to, uh, try to yeah push your pelvis down enough to feel at least feel a good stretch here and get the benefits of the posture Now if you want to add that quad stretch you can drop that back knee 
Straighten out that front knee a bit to send your sit bones back just enough to reach back and grab that ankle and then send it forward into that low lunge again. Again, pressing a lot of weight into that right um, foot and, and keeping it out of that left wrist. Flexing that back um, ankle if you want to support that, back, that ankle. And then sending it back, sinking into this posture to feel that nice stretch through the left quads. Deep inhale. And exhale. Now we'll slowly release that back leg. Press both of our hands into the ground. Walk our right foot over to the left side and bring that shin to the mat. Externally rotating that shin, pressing that knee into the mat to protect that knee. Pointing those toes and sinking your pelvis forward, keeping those hips square with the mat. Again, if you want a nice hip flexor stretch, you can tent those fingers and inhale that spine nice and long, pressing the back of that foot, the back leg into the mat. You should feel a stretch through the left hip flexor. If you need a little more love through the outer right hip or through that IT band, you can walk your hands forward and sink your weight into that right leg. And you'll feel more of a stretch right through this area. If you're not feeling that stretch, check if you're leaning more towards the other, leg, the other side, the left side, if that's the case. See if you can pull your weight into that right hip um, and keeping both of those, so you're um, putting equal amounts of pressure, but you can also lean just a little more towards that right hip to feel it a little deeper in that hip. Good. So breathe in whichever stretch you would prefer to do. Now if you're in the tall pigeon, feel free to walk your hands down now and onto your forearms so we can come into our nice quad stretch. So let's peel that back foot off the mat and let's try to pull that heel towards our booty as much as we can. So keep it nice, keep that nice tension on there and you'll feel it in your left quad. And now let's just do some ankle rolls, rolling it out. Again, I'm, no, I'm not doing one way and then the other. I'm just kind of doing like two rolls to the left and two rolls to the right back and forth. Just whatever is comfortable for you. Again, keeping that tension so your heel is tucking towards your booty. Good, and let's release that leg to the mat now. And we're gonna come up onto our arms, and then we're gonna drop onto that right hip so we can pull our left leg out and in front of us. And we're gonna bring uh, the soles of our feet together and come into a nice butterfly stretch. So your heels can be pressed more towards your groin, or if you're not quite as flexible, you can pull them out just a bit more, um, whichever is most comfortable for you. I like to keep mine close, and then you want to splay your knees out, let's see if I can do this, so splay your knees out towards the mat as best as you can. Spine nice and long. You can even sink your weight forward just a bit and you really feel it in the groin. And when you're ready, you can release 
your right leg to the mat, or extend it nice and long. And we're actually going to um, crisscross, so bring that left leg over the right, and dropping it so our left knee kind of lands just over our right knee. And bringing our left heel towards our right hip. And we're just gonna walk our hands down towards our leg. So at this time, you can grab a strap, or again, take that towel, wrap it around your foot, and use it to kind of leverage this stretch. And if you have another towel, you can even, even place it under your booty to kind of give your pelvis, put your pelvis in the right positioning to assist you in this forward fold. It'll kind of give it a little booster and um, get it in the right positioning so you can sink just a little bit deeper into this stretch. So we're gonna inhale our spine nice and long and then exhale, fold forward, rounding out the spine and just breathing through this stretch. If you don't need your towel, you can place it on the side and just grasp your foot. Let's take one deep inhale. And then on our exhale, see if we can sink just a little bit deeper. Okay, and let's rise up. Let's walk our left hand over to the left side, plant our right hand on the outer edge of our left leg and just do a nice gentle spinal twist over to the left side. Good, and let's release. This time extending our left leg out long and crossing our right leg over our left. Keeping that um, blanket under our hips if you need to. Let's deep inhale, spine long, exhale forward fold. You'll notice one leg is a lot more tight than the other one. Maybe, not for everyone, but a lot of people have that problem, including myself. My left leg is very tight compared to my right leg, so I cannot get nearly as low in this stretch unless I'm super duper warmed up. Let's take a big inhale, and then exhale, sink a little bit deeper into this stretch. When you're ready, you can release your foot. Plant your right hand on the outside of your right hip. Plant your left hand on the outside of your right leg. And gentle spinal twist over to the right side. Spine long. Deep inhale. And exhale. and then we can return to neutral. Remove any blankets that we may have. And keeping, um, you can kind of scoot your butt towards the middle of the mat if you want. And keeping that uh, right leg crossed over the left, we're just gonna grab our knees, bend both of our knees. We're gonna slowly spinal roll down. Again, scoot yourself to a better positioning if you need to. We're going to keep those legs crossed, grab onto our ankles, and pull our knees in towards our torso. We're just going to do a nice stretch. You should feel it more in your right hip if your right leg is on top of your left.
And let's use our left hand to guide our knees over to the left side. So just gently resting them. They don't have to be on the mat. Um, just kind of stop wherever naturally it naturally stops. We're going to extend our right arm over to the right side and follow our gaze with our fingertips. Unwinding the body now. Gently releasing our hips. And then we can return to neutral. This time bringing our left leg over our right, grabbing both of our ankles and pulling our knees in towards our torsos and pulling our ankles kind of up until you feel it in that left hip. You can gently close your eyes if that be comfortable for you. Let's use our hand to guide our knees over to the right side. Extending that left arm out long to the side and following it with our gaze. Again, your eyes can be closed at this time. Let's slowly return to neutral and we'll do one more pose before we enter into Shavasana and that is everyone's favorite happy baby pose. So bend those knees, see if you can grab the outer edge of those feet with your hands, pull those knees towards your armpits and then rock on your spine. So nice gentle spinal rock here. Rock back and forth in happy baby pose. Allowing your spine to decompress. Just gently back and forth. When you're ready, you can slowly release your legs and extend them out long. Grabbing any props you need to make yourself comfortable in corpse pose for Shavasana. I like to press the, the back of my head into the mat to kind of lift my shoulder blades off the mat and then kind of walk my shoulder blades in just a bit to get really good positioning for Shavasana. And allow your arms to hang heavy, your feet to relax and hang heavy. And just do a quick scan of your body. Are you tensing any muscles without really notice, noticing you're doing it? If you notice something tense, just take a deep inhale. And then exhale, release that tension into your mat. I always hold tension in my shoulders, so when I do my scan in Shavasana, I'm always squeezing and tensing them without even realizing. So 
It's always good to do that full body scan. And then allow yourself to return to your breath. Notice the abdomen rising with every inhale and sinking with every exhale. In running especially, it's really important to make sure we're doing more of that abdominal breathing and not that shallow chest breathing because when you're doing the chest breathing, you can't get as deep of a breath and that's really important in running that you can get those nice deep breaths so learning that nice expansive belly breathing that you do in yoga can really benefit your running and your part of cardiovascular system while you're training now just allow your thoughts to drift away 